The idea of time travel has two sides. On one side is the idea of time traveling to the future. We are doing that now. Every day that passes is, in effect, traveling one day into the future for us. We also know through relativity and Einstein that everything is, well, relative. You can time travel into the future, faster by acceleration. Whether by accelerating really fast through space-time, or experiencing an acceleration towards an object through its gravity. Sitting on the surface of the Earth, glued to your chair, you may not think you are accelerating. But the fact that you are glued to your chair works like an acceleration which is why time dilation occurs in gravitational fields, as well as at relativistic speeds. In very severe gravitational fields like a black hole, this becomes very evident. If you hover just above a black hole, you are traveling very rapidly into the future compared to a reference point away from the black hole, such as Earth. Whatever acceleration really means aside, we don't really know that. We just know what happens involving it nor do we really know what time is. Ask physicists what time is and you will get different answers, ranging from a dimension to nothing at all, rather it's just a perception. In one case though, it's a dimension you can move around in, just like our three dimensions. But in the end it has some rules different from the other dimensions. But in one case, could you even tell time existed if all particles stood still and nothing ever changed? Imagine yourself as the only person in existence in a spaceship, and the rest of the universe was just a bunch of hydrogen atoms. If you go accelerating through that space, time would dilate. But you'd step out and see the same bunch of hydrogen atoms that you had when you started. Nothing had changed. Does time exist in that situation? But our universe doesn't work that way for various reasons. So for that question in our universe, there are still things that will change no matter what, and mark the passage of time. Radioactive decay, for example, would continue, no matter what you do, and it would mark time. As would the eventual decay of the proton, if indeed that actually happens, that is still debated in science. So even if all particles were frozen at a standstill, something would probably eventually happen even through random quantum fluctuations and even Boltzmann brains, that would mark the passage of some kind of time. It has to be said that time ticks at different rates in the universe depending on where you are and what you are doing, says that time is a thing. Einstein called it space-time because the two seem to be linked, and that might make it a dimension of some sort. What does seem clear is that nothing seems to ever go backward in time in this universe. You can do thought experiments and run it in reverse. This is known as the arrow of time, and we don't know why it always seems to point forward. One wonders what set it to be that way, since there isn't a ready reason for it in physics. And there are some ideas involving it. Stephen Hawking, for example, advanced ideas such as sideways time and lamented why the science fiction authors weren't taking advantage of the idea and writing stories about it but I think the answer is most of us didn't fully understand it, myself included, at least the way he expressed it. That said, Hawking did have an interesting take on the idea of paradoxes. One of the major issues with backwards time travel are the infamous paradoxes it creates. At its core, it implies, at least in a single timeline, that you could go backwards in time and prevent your own birth. The Back to the Future movies explored this quite well, as did a number of others, where you go back in time and mess things up, either by erasing yourself from photographs, but also to changing world history, and any number of questions have been asked about going back and altering history, both personal and global. Shooting certain dictators being a major one, but also things like going back and witnessing religious events and recording them have been envisioned. I would add on that and say what happens if you alter them? There are many questions in time travel. It remains fertile territory, both forwards and backwards for the imagination. But the reality is that the universe itself, something about it, seems to prohibit us from ever doing it. And part of the problem is that we know how to do it, but we don't know if anything we could ever do would actually work. One way is to exceed the speed of light. The speed of light is somewhat of a misnomer because in the sense that we see the speed of light, we see it as a wave of light, a photon, 
and how fast it can propagate through the universe. The problem is, it's not the only place where the speed limit of the universe asserts. It's also the speed of time, and, as another instance, the speed of gravity. Pluck the sun out of the solar system, the Earth would not go flying into space for eight minutes, because gravity propagates at the speed of light. With time, it's often said that photons do not experience the passage of time, which is because that speed is also the point at which time dilation becomes so severe that time in the frame of reference of the photon is instantaneous. Existence is an instant to it. Photons know nothing of time. Only in other frames of reference does anyone see a photon propagating through space at the speed of light. It itself does not see that. But the speed of light is more than that. It's also, likely not coincidentally, the point at which the energy needed to move a piece of matter, say an atom, goes to infinity. Infinite energy is required to push a piece of matter to this speed. Well, infinite energy does not appear to be possible in the universe, so you can never get enough energy together to push a spacecraft at or faster than the speed of light. It seems to be a hard limit, at least in this regard. Oddly, that does not prohibit the idea of particles that inherently are going faster than the speed of light, tachyons, and are traveling backwards in time, but they cannot ever slow down to the speed of light. In relativity, the universe does not prohibit such things, but we've also never detected them if they exist, and it's really just an exercise of flipping numbers with a negative sign. But it also may be that the speed of light is a hard limit and the negative sign doesn't exist, and there is nothing faster than the speed of light, and that it's baked into the universe as a one-sided phenomenon. Another way to time travel is any other way that can be envisioned to go faster than light, Alcubier drives, wormholes, and so on are all duly time machines that can go backwards in time as well. The two ideas are intertwined. Once again, it's that link between space and time that Einstein saw so long ago. But back to Hawking's idea about what exactly it is about the universe that prevents us from traveling back in time. Notice the chronology protection conjecture. It actually is a very simple idea that there are laws of physics, and we know there are, beyond standard general relativity, that actually do prevent time travel on a level above and beyond what I've already mentioned, closing any loopholes, like faster than light travel, that seem to suggest that it's possible. But we only think that because there's some unknown physics that kills the idea off. One of the reasons backwards time travel possibilities persist in general relativity are closed time-like curves that show up in some solutions to Einstein's equations. This is a bit different from another way of preventing time travel backwards, which is simply that you can't violate causality, cause and effect, because each closed time-like curve has some kind of event horizon that actually stops you from seeing the causal violation. That is one interpretation known as chronology violation. Hawking had fun with this idea. He had a little bit of a flair for science fiction, and in his 1992 paper presenting all this, he made up a character, basically, the Chronology Protection Agency, that stops anything on a macroscopic scale, but not necessarily subatomic, that stops any kind of classical time paradoxes as we see them. Something stops you from going back and preventing your own birth. Thus, the family photographs remain intact unless you decide to retouch out an X with Photoshop or other suitable software, or paint yourself into a painting of George Washington with you handing him his false teeth, and then claiming to the internet that you were there in 1796 as the president's personal dental trainer. Stephen Hawking said this, and I quote, It seems that there is a chronology protection agency which prevents the appearance of closed timelike curves and so makes the universe safe for historians. Tongue in cheek, yes, but the brass tacks here is that there is something in the laws of our woefully incomplete understanding of physics that we have not yet discovered that puts a hard stop on anything the size of a bonobo from going back in time and altering history. But maybe individual subatomic particles can do it. Again, there are many science fiction stories that involve chronology police. Too many to mention here, all over pop culture, from Doctor Who to Asimov. 
that act from the position of the future to prevent the changing of the past for the good of all. But closed time-like curves are tricky. Creating them requires solutions to general relativity that are either impossible, practically, or not likely. One is the Tipler cylinder, which is a rotating cylinder, infinitely long, and other ideas involving massive scale rotation, and again traversable wormholes, which in this case, the mouths traveling around at relativistic speeds. One possible major preventer of time travel might be something we already know about. The problem is that general relativity ignores quantum effects. Those generally get lost in the noise at large scales where general relativity works. But that may also be a stumbling block, and that a quantum theory of gravity is needed to really understand all of this. Something that plagues physics to this day, and something Einstein worked on for 30 years and never found it. But there are some ideas that can be plugged in here to fill in that gap. And the major one shows that if you try to open a wormhole, it immediately destroys itself. That may have implications on any form of backward time travel. But there is too much uncertainty about this interpretation. Still, this is what Hawking advanced as a tool of the Chronology Protection Agency, that there is no agency needed. Nature itself will cause vacuum fluctuations to build up on a quantum scale and destroy the wormhole instantly, and that the full answer lies in a theory of quantum gravity whenever we figure one out. Going further, there are also possibilities in string theory that would support Hawking's conjecture. Trouble is, no one knows if string theory is actually a true description of the universe. And it too seems incomplete. In short, even if we could ever prove string theory, it's disturbingly possible that we'd end up with a more precise, but still not complete, theory of everything. There may yet still be missing puzzle pieces linking everything together. In the end, however, there may be a simpler answer, but a deceptively simple one. It's that backwards time travel is possible, and you can indeed go back and see the past. The problem is that you are no longer in the universe where you started, and instead an alternate universe, with a now divergent timeline that prevents all paradoxes. In short, you don't disappear from the photograph if you prevent your birth. It's simply that in this new universe, the photograph never existed, and there you are as a stranded time traveler, not only out of time, this new timeline is not yours, so also out of your original universe, and you cannot ever go back. Warning to any of the time travelers out there. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently concerned about overworked photons. No matter what, from the moment they come into existence to the moment they stop instantly, they never have any free time to do what they want, not even for a movie. Tired light theory indeed, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.